The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Surface currents induced in a ground plane by an overhead conductor illustrate the method of images. Also illustrated is the superposition of fields due to line currents to satisfy boundary conditions. Here is a metal cylinder mounted over a metal ground plane. The cylinder is shorted to the ground plane at one end and driven by a current source at the other. This is familiar as an EQS situation where the same cylinder is insulated from the same ground plane and driven by a voltage source. Now the situation is magnetoquasi-static, MQS. Here's the metal cylinder mounted over the metal ground plane. The cylinder is driven by a current source at one end and is shorted to the ground plane at the other end. The ground plane consists of an aluminum sheet having a thickness of about one millimeter. It's resting on a plywood base. Our magnetic field is the same as that due to a line current here, just below the center of the conductor, and its image here, below the ground plane. With the line currents at these positions, the cylinder has no normal component of magnetic field. The value of A is just that for which the cylinder of radius R has no perpendicular component of magnetic field. These are the field lines produced by the line currents. The field is tangential to the surface of the cylinder and to the midplane. Thus, these surfaces can be replaced by the metal surfaces of the cylinder and ground plane. The fields are terminated by surface currents in the cylinder and in the ground plane. The image line current contributes to the magnetic field above the ground plane in exactly the same way as the actual surface current, which is non-uniformly distributed along the ground plane surface. When we drive a current from a 3 kilohertz source through the circular conductor, the actual currents are in the metal conductor walls, distributed in just such a way that there is no magnetic flux normal to every point on a given conductor surface. Similarly, these currents are returned in the ground plane in just such a way that there is essentially no magnetic flux density normal to the ground plane either. We can measure the magnetic field using this induction coil. The induced voltage is related through Faraday's law to the time rate of change of the linked magnetic flux. Thus, the amplitude of the probe voltage is proportional to the flux density, the average probe area, the number of turns, and the angular frequency. Our coil has an effective area of pi 0.85 centimeters squared, 200 turns, and an angular frequency of 2 pi times our frequency, which is 3 kilohertz. In this demonstration, a typical measured flux density of 0.11 Gauss peak gives an induced voltage of 9.5 millivolts peak. With the coil oriented this way, the vertical field component is recorded. When oriented this way, the horizontal field component is measured. Here at the center line, the tangential field is horizontal, just because of symmetry. 
Let's see if the flux density normal to the conducting sheet does tend to be zero off the center line. Here to the side, the normal flux density appears to remain small compared to that tangential. So the current is returned in the sheet with just that distribution required to make the normal flux density small. Our equivalent line currents can be used to predict the flux density tangential to the sheet as measured by the sensing coil. L is the conductor height, and R is its radius. Then the height of the equivalent line current, A, is defined like this. Y is the location of the probe on the ground plane. Here is the Y dependence of the tangential flux density at the ground plane. This is the predicted distribution of normalized magnetic field with normalized probe position. H0 is the magnetic field at y equals 0. The tangential magnetic field is largest directly under the conductor, trailing off to 0 as the probe is pulled away. As the sensing coil is moved out from under the conductor, the tangential flux density decreases. Because there is little normal flux density just above the sheet, there is little of either of the components of magnetic field below the sheet. So what we see is the distribution of surface current density returning in the sheet. At high frequency, the current distributes itself in the sheet in just such a way as to make the normal flux density near zero. Our theory predicts the flux density at the center line, where y equals 0. Our current is 3 amps. The conductor height is 11 centimeters, and its radius is 2.1 centimeter. So A is 10.8 centimeters. The predicted flux density is then 0.11 gauss. Directly under the conductor, carrying a 3 amp peak current, as shown in the upper scope trace, we measure 9.5 millivolts peak on the lower trace. This corresponds to 0.11 Gauss peak. This is in better agreement with the theory than we have a right to expect, given such factors as the size of the sensing coil. Here are some points that we have taken with this probe at different positions on the ground plane. Remember, this is the distribution of surface current density in the ground plane. Our experiments have shown that the perpendicular field at the surface of the ground plane is much smaller than the tangential field. This is true because the frequency of 3 kilohertz is high enough that the ground plane behaves as a perfect conductor. Let's see what happens if we lower the frequency. If we reduce the frequency by 10 to 300 hertz, the induced voltage decreases by 10. That's just because of Faraday's law. So let's compensate by turning up the scope gain by 10. At this lower frequency, we see that the ratio of normal component to tangential component is larger than at 3 kilohertz. At 300 hertz, here's the tangential component and here's the normal component. At 3 kilohertz, here's the normal component, and here's the tangential component. At 3 kilohertz, the ground plane is thick enough to act as a perfect conductor, giving the tangential field predicted using the fields of a line current and its image.